With the release of Halo 3 on PC, it has me thinking, which map is the best map ever in Halo 3? Well, in this video, we're gonna answer that question. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again give you another video about some Halo awesomeness. So in today's video we're going to discuss which map is the best map in Halo 3. If you guys have your own tier list of favorite maps that give me your top three possibly. You know let me know in the comment section down below. I do write the comments and try to reply to most of them as well. So I'm sure you're all familiar with this setup. This is the tier list maker. I'm sure you guys have all seen these kind of videos and images before. So the setup that we have here is S tier. That means it's like God tier. One of the greatest maps ever created in Halo franchise, A, B, C, D, following down, and then we have Trash, as in the maps I wish I'd never get a chance to play ever again. And there are some maps in Halo 3 that I would agree that kind of deserve to be in that Trash section. So for that further ado, let's jump right into this. If you guys want to see more content like this, make sure to leave a like on this video. It lets me know you want to see some more content. If we get like 100 likes on this, I'll definitely make another one of these tier videos so you guys uh, discuss furthermore on some awesome Halo content. I'm going to go through this pretty quickly because we have 24 maps to go through. So we're going to do this pretty quickly. Avalanche. It's a solid map. It's pretty good. Uh, I just don't really like how the flow of the map pretty much focuses around that middle hallway. And a lot of the map doesn't get utilized. So I honestly... If this map never got played again, I wouldn't really care much for it. It still plays all right. Uh, I put it on the C tier. Next one, we have Blackout, which is a remake of the Halo 2 Classic Lockout. And it doesn't really play out as well as the Lockout did. Uh, they've changed a lot of jumps. Uh, they changed some different uh, geometry on the map, sort of the different elevation changes and things like that. Don't really play out that great, but the bones on it are still pretty good. So you, you remake Lockout, you're going to have a good time. I think this map goes into the B tier. Next one, we have Citadel. It's a symmetrical map. You have some pretty good weapon variety with the rocket launcher, two snipers, and the two overshields that spawn on it. That's a solid map, uh, but I feel like the characteristic of it doesn't really lend itself to very unique kind of style of gameplay. It's a pretty just standard solid map. I'll throw it into the B tier here. Now, next one, we have Cold Storage. This was actually a free map given out on Bungie Day back in the day during Halo 3, and obviously it's a remake from Halo 1, and a lot of Halo 1 maps have some very odd formatting to them. It plays out all right. I think it's a pretty good free-for-all one. Slayer, not so much. Uh, I think uh, probably have to throw it into the C tier as it's fun, but it could be a lot better. Next one, we have Construct. Now, this one really depends on the game mode you're playing. If you're playing Hardcore, King of the Hill, I absolutely love the map. If you're playing Hardcore Team Slayer, it's one of the worst maps to play. I hate it. And because it's, it's so hard to get to that top ring area, but the elevation changes are different. The geometry and the uh, style of the map is really cool. I'd actually probably have to put it in somewhere, you know, below A, above D, uh, just because uh, the, it really depends on the game mode that you're playing to make this map really fun. I throw it into the B tier. Next one, you have Epitaph. It's another DLC map that was brought into Halo 3. Uh, you see it mainly played in Free For All because that's the only map I really find it ever working out well on. Uh, especially when this map originally released, it had the you know uh, impenetrable barriers, much like Snowbound used to have uh, when it first launched. That was just awful to play. I never really cared for this map. It's a decent Free For All map. If I can never play it again, I should be kind of cool with it. And actually, would probably put it in the trash tier. Yeah, I'm sorry, all right, Epitaph fans. Uh, I just really don't like this map at all. We have Foundry coming up next. This is the original uh, Forge canvas map. Now there have been fantastic maps made with this canvas, like Onslaught, Amplified, awesome maps made within Halo 3's Forge. Uh, Foundry itself, not that great. I don't like the spawn system with it, and I feel like it's just very really segmented and just doesn't really play out very well. Um, if I never played this Foundry again, I'd be happy. That goes in the trash tier. Next one here, we have uh, Ghost Town, another DLC map. The visuals on this are fantastic. The weapon variety is eh, pretty good. You got a rocket launcher, you got a sniper rifle, you got a power drain as well, so pretty standard stuff right there. Is it something that you absolutely have to play again? Or remake again in another Halo game? Eh, not so much. So I think I actually probably would put this eh, right around the C tier. If there was a, a, a C and a half to B, I would probably put it in there. Uh, but I think right now, I think C tier is kind of where it needs to be. Next one, I know you guys all love this map, Guardian. Guardian is a fantastic map. One of the most iconic maps in the Halo franchise, especially for Halo 3. And uh, 
So it does great when it comes to playing ball. I actually really like this Modo map also for King of the Hill. I think it plays out fantastic on that one as well. Though I think playing just like uh, Team Slayer, eh, it's kind of, eh, it gets really standoffish because you got people hiding out in the Snipe Tower and you got people hiding out in gold and blue for the most part. Um, I do like how predictable the spawns are, but there, and there is a way to kind of navigate throughout the map with like camo and the underneath area, so that's great. Uh, but there's a reason why you only see this map played for ball when it comes to like the hardcore playlist, because the map isn't exactly well balanced. Uh, it's fun to play, and um, if it's like a zombie mode, sure. If it's free for all, sure. Uh, if you're playing like uh, like I said, ball or king of the hill, I think it plays out great. But your your, your team slayer is where you gotta need to really nail the map quality on it, and nothing just what really holds it back from being like S tier amazing map. I'm gonna put it in the A tier as it's a fantastic map, but there are some downsides to it, so I think it goes in the A. Next map we have assembly. Now this one I feel just kind of meh with, like it's not bad, but it's not great. It's um, just kind of like another map, it feels like. It's probably the most like generic feeling map out of all of the Halo 3 maps. And so, I think it just goes into C tier. That's like right in the middle. Next one is an iconic map within the Halo franchise. It's been remade so many times. It is Heretic, which is a remake of Midship from Halo 2. So obviously the bones on this map are great. I love this map actually because of how BR focused it is. If you really want to have like a 4v4 Slayer experience that really tell who's the better Team Slayer team, you might have to go with Heretic because it's such a hectic, fast-paced map with predictable spawns uh, and a very good focus on the BR and also how it basically has become like the official Halo 3 free-for-all map. You gotta jump into Heretic and since it's such a map that's been remade in Halo 3, it's been remade in Halo 5 as well and just been like the good base of just general maps you know, for Halo with like a circular format with a central disc platform thing in the middle. Meaning that I gotta put I gotta put Heretic S tier. Uh, next one we have High Ground. High Ground, yeah, it's High Ground. You know, we do have some fond memories of it being from the Halo 3 beta back in the day. Uh, it definitely was designed as a attack defense kind of mode. So when you're playing Team Slayer on it, I really don't like it at all. Uh, I think it plays out well for like bomb or CTF. I think it play or free for all. It might play out. It plays out pretty well. But for the map itself. If you have to make the map specifically for a specific style, then it's not as great as other maps have been. You know, honestly, if High Ground never played again, I wouldn't mind it. It'd be okay. I gotta put this one in the C tier. Uh, next map used to be my most hated map in Halo 3, and that is Isolation. Uh, it's a very awkward map. I just don't like how the fundamentals of it is just like the middle of the map is the high ground area. Everyone's kind of trying to jock for position on that. Down below you got the rockets and stuff, but they also have a ghost on it. I never liked vehicles in 4v4 maps. Uh, I used to be absolutely hated on this map. Now, after playing it more with the MCC, I've come to like it a little bit more, so I don't hate it anymore, but I certainly don't really care much for playing it. And so if I never play it again, I would be quite happy. So it's not quite trash, but not quite as good as these maps. You're gonna go into the D tier. Next one, we have Last Resort. Last Resort is one of the most iconic maps within Halo 3. Obviously a remake from Halo 2's Zanzibar. And dude, this, this map is awesome. Like, I love this map. Having the sniper rifle locations, you got the camo to help you kind of navigate throughout the whole thing. You also have the Spartan laser to help take out those vehicles so the vehicles are not totally overpowered and run thing, run shop on stuff like that. And overall, like this map is fantastic. There's a reason why they remade it because it's a great map. If it comes back in Halo Infinite, I'd be super excited about that. And uh, you know, it plays great in 4v4 and it plays great in BTB, which is really tough balance to make when it comes to making a map where you can have it play well with eight players or 16 is the exact same map. Pretty damn awesome. And the additions that they've made with this map for Halo 3, I think are fantastic as well. I'm gonna put this one in the S tier. Next we have Longshore, a Halo 3 DLC map. Now this one, I kind of actually, now that I think about it, kind of gives me the same feels of like, if you're going to remake Hang 'em High, but then also make it so you can actually go through the middle of the map. This is what you would make out probably would be Longshore as you have the two large bases on each side of the map. Not perfectly symmetrical, but there's a way to kind of, you know, navigate this like maze kind of structure of the building in the middle of the map. And you also have like the underground area that help you kind of flank around. So there's a lot more flow to the map. I think anywhere you go on Longshore, Longshore you're going to find some action. It's going to be a good fun. And I think this map 
Although I think it does get kind of held back a little bit from it just only being good for BTB. The spawns can be kind of funky at times as well with this one. So I think it kind of holds it back a little bit. This one's got to go in the B tier. Like it's a solid map. Next we have one of the most iconic maps for Halo 3, Narrows. Narrows is a fantastic map. I've always enjoyed this one. It's one of my favorites in Halo 3. I really enjoy like the tug of war aspect when it comes to this as you have to basically kind of grind your way up to get the positioning to where you need to be. And you know, we've seen some amazing clips on this one with like you know no scuffing people out of a man cannon you know, ricochet bounce shots to getting guys off of spawns so that's the one thing i think it has against it that the spawning is a little too predictable that you can pull off just like ridiculous like spawn kills and stuff like that it's one of those great things where like you can you know find your way underneath it but it's gonna take you a little bit longer or you can you know, go for the high risk or high you know reward maneuver of taking the man cannon and uh, a lot of great gameplay in this one i think the only thing that holds it back is that it's a little too predictable when it comes to its gameplay and so honestly i put it at the a tier next map we have orbital a dlc map which honestly i think i had like a forge idea for this map back in the day then bungie actually made the map which was cool but when i actually got a chance around playing it it's uh it's not that great it's a little confusing especially for new players um, and it's kind of tough to navigate your way throughout the map. It's very choke pointy and like playing against those 90 degree angles. It's just like people just throw nades. It's not that fun. And for some reason you have a mongoose on there just I think for the lols really. And so uh, if I never played Orbital again, I'd be quite happy about that. I think Orbital, I'm sorry. You're gonna join your friends with Epitaph and Foundry into the trash tier. I just don't wanna play that map again. Next one we have Rat Race. One of the few maps that comes up in BTB. It's an interesting map idea with like the ring on the outside and the battles happening in the middle. Uh, I just find it a very awkward map, especially for a BTB map. I like having a little bit more openness, a little bit av more availability for creativity when it comes to doing well on this map. I think you gotta put this map probably over in the D tier as in that's not that great. It's not that great. Next map we have Sandbox, which is the second Forge canvas. This one really kind of upped the ante when it came to Halo 3's Forge. And yeah, I actually really enjoy the default map with this one on BTB. And I think this map probably belongs somewhere more into the B tier, actually. As I do like it more than some of these C tier maps for sure. And it definitely has much better gameplay. And overall, I think it's pretty fun for, especially for a Forge map. I think for it's made pretty dang well. Next one, we have Sand Trap, one of the most iconic BTB maps within the Halo franchise, obviously because of the elephant. If you ever played CTF on this map, you know what I'm talking about. Playing around with those elephants is awesome. The weapon variety is fantastic. The vehicle variety is fantastic as well. And uh, heavies, it's complete chaos, which is just insane, especially with that Goss Hog, you can put in some work. Overall, I think this map is fantastic. I think the only thing that holds it back is that the lines of sight are a little too long to where you can kind of get picked off from anywhere on the map. And so I think it's the one thing holding it back from being like an S tier map. But for all the fun you have with like the elephant and one of the most iconic Halo 3 maps, you got to put Sand Trap in the A tier because it got remade even in Halo 5 as well. So, you know, it's good. And next one, we have Snowbound. Snowbound, it's an interesting map. When it first launched, it had those barriers, which were just super annoying to fight against. And then they made Boundless. It's actually, ever since they redid that section, it really helped improve this map quality a lot. I think this one goes into the B tier. It's a pretty solid map. Next one, we have Standoff. I, I will admit, I do love me some Standoff. Uh, it's... It's just fun, man. This map is just great. It's, you know, I do like how there is some elevation differences, so it kind of ups more variety to gameplay. It, it works great for like attack defense modes, works great for two flag or neutral bomb as well. And uh, the weapon variety is pretty good. I've always wished there was a sniper rifle in the default BTB version of this map. Again, this one works well for 44 and BTB. I think the only thing it has going against it, if you get one Warhog to go well for you, you can absolutely trap these guys in their spawn. It's such as, since there is like little cover between like the two rows of rocks. And so the thing that's what really holds it back from being like an S tier map is that uh, it can be a little bit of a snowball sometimes on this map. And so I will put this one in the A tier. Oh my God, guys. Now these next two maps are gonna be fantastic to talk about. It's gonna be the pit for this first one here. Next one we have Valhalla. The pit is one of my all time favorite maps within Halo. I love, love, love this map. It's just like one of the best competitive maps you can possibly put in Halo. That's the reason why it's been remade so many times. Put in the, the competitive modes of Halo 3, Halo Reach, and I think it was remade in Halo 4 as well. Because this map is freaking awesome. This map is like one of the most iconic maps in the Halo franchise. I love how it just plays well in any kind of game mode you put on it. 
and the weapon variety is great. And once they remove those top uh, level spawns above the base uh, for that make it to the pit stop version of it, perfect. The map's perfect. I absolutely love this one. This one, easy S tier, easy S tier. Next one on the map, the last one we have to talk about, guys, Valhalla. As we do now, this is a spiritual remake of Blood Gulch, which I think what Bungie wanted to do with this map is uh, wanted to remake Blood Gulch as it's one of the most iconic maps within the Halo franchise, but kind of do it in a way to they feel like it would actually lend itself to better gameplay. And I think they did just that with Valhalla. This map is amazing for big team battle. Absolutely love this map. This is one of those maps where if you don't remake Valhalla or, or Blood Gulch within the Halo game, you're missing something within the map pool. So this map is fantastic. I absolutely love it. I can't praise it enough. You know that this map is definitely have to go into the S tier. So to review our S tier maps, we have Heretic, Last Resort, The Pit, Valhalla. A tier, we have Guardian, Neros, Sand Trap, Standoff. B tier, we have Blackout, Citadel, Construct, Longshore, Sandbox, Snowbound, C tier, we have Avalanche, Cold Storage, Ghost Town, Assembly, as well as High Ground. D tier, Isolation, Rat Race, and then in the trash, throw it in the bin. I never want to see it again. Epitaph, Foundry, and Orbital. So that is my tier list for the best Halo 3 maps. Again, let me know in the comment section down below what are some of your three favorite maps within the Halo franchise. If you want to show me what your list will be, Link is in the description down below to go check out this tier list. Send a tweet at me at Kevin Kulex Halo to see what you guys have to say as well. So thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I know it's going to be a little bit longer video, but trust me, it's worth it. And if you get like 100 plus likes on this video, I'll do another tier list for you guys as well. So thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you missed any content for me, check out the videos on the screen right over here. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.